listening to WMNF Tampa, 88.5 FM, a little new parquet courts. Welcome back. We continue our discussion now about clean energy alternatives, and we focus now on green jobs. And joining us by Zoom is Bob Keefe. He's executive director of E2, that's Environmental Entrepreneurs. Welcome to WMNF, Bob. Hey, thank you for being, and thank you for letting me be here with you. I'm really glad you could join us. So tell us, first of all, what is your company, Environmental Entrepreneurs? Well, it's not a company. We're a, a nonprofit, uh, nonpartisan environmental group. Uh, E2 is a national organization of about 11,000 business people, uh, investors, and others across the economy uh, who work or do business in every single state in the country uh, and also realize that the economy and the environment aren't at odds but, but depend on each other. And so we work to pass smart uh, uh, policies that can create jobs, drive economic growth, and help our environment all across the country. And that's a topic that's really in the news. And so we'll get to that during this segment. Of yeah. course, um, I don't know, you, you probably didn't get to hear our the first part of our program, but we were just talking about a, a local Pinellas County Commission vote next week about p- potentially becoming a 100% renewable community. And so how would that impact jobs in Pinellas County or, or anywhere else that decides to go 100% clean? Well, it would impact it in a very good way, Sean. I mean, you know, E2 has been around for about 20 years. We have worked on clean energy policies all around the country. And what we found is this, and, and we also track clean energy jobs all around the country. And I'd love to talk to you a little bit about that and what it means to Tampa Bay. But what we know is this, the states and the regions that have the best clean energy policies create the most clean energy jobs. Uh, and yes, it's the places like California where uh, almost a half a million people work in clean energy now, but it's also a place like North Carolina, uh, which has the first and uh, the only renewable energy standard in the state. It's also uh, home to about 100,000 clean energy jobs. Uh, Florida is about number four, I think right now in clean energy jobs, but given that it's the sunshine state, Given that energy efficiency is so important to that state, given that there are so many people that drive cars that could be electric vehicles and electric vehicle charging stations uh, to to power those cars, we can create a lot more jobs in Pinellas and Hillsborough and all across uh, Florida. Our guest is Bob Keith, Executive Director of E2, that's Environmental Entrepreneurs. It's 1030 in the morning and you're listening to WMNF Tampa. I'm Sean Canan. So, Bob, I, I'd like to look at two major items in the news concerning clean energy, and you can let listeners know uh, where these things stand it is when it comes to clean jobs. Congress right now is negotiating one of the largest U.S. investments ever in clean energy. So uh, I'll read a little bit from the AP here. President Biden is seeking to whip up climate change fighting efforts abroad at a time when his own climate legislation at home is again in limbo. Biden is at the U.N. Climate Summit in Glasgow. For a second and final day today, he's going. He's promoting global efforts to preserve forests and curb methane leaks before flying home to Washington. But Biden's climate efforts on the global stage are playing out as Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia has again raised doubts about Biden's social spending package, including $555 billion in climate provisions. So, Bob, what, how would how does that legislation impact green jobs? Well, thanks for that. So, in, in Congress right now, there are actually two bills that. Um, that are pushing forward clean energy provisions. One is the president's Build Back Better Act. Uh, now that, as, as we know, as it stands right now, is about $550 billion in investments in clean energy. And what does that look like? That's tax incentives for more solar and more wind. It's tax breaks for people who buy electric vehicles. But it's also uh, a, the biggest amount in spending in clean energy we've ever seen in this country. Um, It's $40 billion, for instance, to the Department of Energy for grants and loan guarantee programs to help clean energy companies in Florida and all across the country get up and running. Uh, It's $3 billion to help rural co-ops, places like I I used to live in Tampa Bay and was a member of the Withlacoochee River Electric Co-op up in northern uh, North Tampa Bay in Pasco and, and Hernando counties. $3 $3 billion for rural electric co-ops like that to bring on more storage, battery storage, uh, so they can store renewable energy and use it during the night when the sun's not shining. Um, it's, it's a whole host of uh, other tax and 
uh, uh, rebates for consumers for everything from high efficiency uh, uh, clothes dryers and air conditioning HVAC units to electric bicycles and two wheeled electric vehicles uh, that are reducing emissions uh, with every ride to the local grocery store or wherever you want or down to the beach. So that's the that's one piece of the legislation that Congress is debating right now. The other piece is the Infrastructure Act, Sean. Uh, it's the infrastructure bill. And that, of course, uh, uh, includes about uh, almost a, or a trillion dollars worth of investments in things like roads and bridges and hardening uh, places like Bayshore Boulevard and, and the bridges across Tampa Bay. Uh, but it also includes $65 billion for, for grid modernization and upgrading. So Florida, for instance, may not have to face the type of uh, deep freeze disaster that we saw in Texas earlier this year. Uh, and it'll also upgrade those grids, by the way, to move more clean energy from solar farms in the middle of the state uh, and hopefully eventually wind uh, offshore wind off of our coasts and things like that. So those are the two bills that are being debated in Congress. Uh, quite coincidentally, I was with uh, Congresswoman Kathy Castor yesterday, uh, uh, who represents Tampa, of course, and also is the chair of the Select Committee on the Climate Crisis. And she is very confident that this is going to go through, and, and, and a lot of people in, in Washington are confident that it's going to go through. And it's because, Sean, of the jobs that can be created with this. It's because of the economic opportunities that are going to be playing out all across the country, including in Florida. Um, you know, we had th this again would be the biggest investment ever in clean energy. The second and big, the, the biggest investment to date in clean energy uh, was back in 2009 with the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. Uh, then we invested 90 a billion dollars into clean energy, the biggest investment ever uh, by the US government. What did we get out of that? Well, we weatherized about a million homes, made them more efficient so they're not leaking uh, hot air in the, uh, in the winter or cold air in the summer. We launched about 100,000 clean energy projects across the country. We invested uh, as a country in about 500 uh, startup clean energy companies and clean vehicle companies including, by the way, a little company called Tesla, which now uh, is the one of the uh, uh, biggest companies in terms of market capitalization in the world. Uh, and by the way, we created about 3 million jobs uh, all across America in every single state. So that was $90 billion back in 2009. What we're talking about now is, is, is investing six times that amount into clean energy. So that quite naturally is going to create jobs in Florida and every other state in this country. Our guest is Bob Keefe. He's executive director of E2. That's Environmental Entrepreneurs. It's 1035 in the morning and you're listening to WMNF Tampa. If you'd like to join this conversation, you can call in at 813-239-9663. You can also email questions to dj at wmnf.org. You can text 813-433-0885. So we mentioned the two major bills in Congress that are happening right now that could really impact jobs and clean jobs. But what about the International Climate Summit that's going on right now in Scotland? What's at stake? Well, what's at stake, quite frankly, is the planet. <laughs> uh, the, the climate conference, the COP26 conference in Glasgow right now is, uh, as uh, the UN Secretary has said, is, is perhaps the last best chance we have to blunt climate change uh, enough that it doesn't uh, continue to create and, and increase the number of natural disasters that we have uh, around the world. It's also the opportunity to, Sean, to, to um, transform our economy uh, and create a lot of jobs, not just in the United States, but all around the globe. Uh, the decisions that will come out of COP will filter down to countries. And every country right now is there making its commitments. President Biden in America has said that uh, we commit to reducing greenhouse gas emissions by 50 to 52 percent by 2030, uh, which is incredibly important. 
Uh, now we need to bring other countries. Now we need to make that happen, first of all, through things like the Build Back Better Act and the infrastructure package that we just talked about that are pending in Congress. But we also need to bring other co countries along uh, as well, because obviously global warming is a global thing. And we need to make sure that we are supporting other countries and that they're doing the right thing as well. Our guest is Bob Keefe with E2, and he, they've put out a, a new report, a new analysis that shows that America's more than 3 million clean energy jobs are nearly evenly split across Republican and Democratic congressional districts, broken down by party affiliation. That's about 1.6 million which is about 54% are in congressional districts currently represented by Democrats and 1.4 million are represented by Republicans in Congress. Earlier, you mentioned Tampa area member of Congress, Kathy Castor. Well, this her Tampa area district employs more than 7,000 clean energy workers. Your report found Castor's the chair of the House Select Committee on the Climate Crisis. So I'll let you respond in just a second, but it, you sent us a, a quote from Representative yeah. Castor who represents uh, quite a few of our listeners. She said, expanding clean energy gives us an opportunity to create millions of good paying jobs across America, which is why we're focused in Congress on passing the single largest investment in clean energy and climate in our nation's history, making the these investments now will be crucial for future generations. So there are 7,000 clean energy workers in T Kathy Castor's district. The other districts nearby have, you know, roughly the same uh, number, you, one would guess. Mm -hmm. What can you tell? Why is this important to have clean energy jobs uh, supported by the American people, especially through federal legislation? Well, the big takeaway here, Sean, is that, look, the, these investments in clean energy that we're talking about through the Build Back Better Act, through the infrastructure package, what we know now is that these will benefit clean energy workers and create clean energy jobs for hundreds of thousands of more workers in every single part of the country, in every single part of the state of Florida, regardless of politics, geography, or geology. These are jobs that aren't limited to where oil reserves are or where coal happens to be. They aren't limited to particular states or regions. And as our new report shows that you can find at cleanjobsamerica.e2.org, uh, they also are not red state jobs. They're not blue state jobs. These are red, white, and blue jobs. And there are a lot of them. As mentioned, there are more than 3 million people that work in renewable energy energy efficiency, clean vehicles, grid modernization, all across the country. Of the 435 congressional districts in America, 432 of them have at least a thousand of these jobs, Sean. And in Florida, what does that look like? In Florida, there are 150,000 people that work in clean energy in every congressional district. And yes, you mentioned uh, Congresswoman Castor, uh, uh, a fantastic leader on climate for Tampa Bay and for Florida and for the country. Her district has about 7,000 people who work in clean energy. Across the Bay, Congressman uh, Chris, Florida 13, uh, that has about 4,500 uh, clean energy jobs. Those are both Democrats, but let's look up North. Let's look to uh, Representative uh, Bill Rackus's district, Florida 12. Uh, he's a Republican.